this is a presentation, a uh, common presentation between us and VMware folks. These two guys, please notice these two names. This is a brilliant engineers from VMware and this leading engineer for VIO, it's core engineers, Adrian and Christoph. So I'll use partially their slides, give you the overview if you're not familiar, but totally up to you. A um, little bit overview of virtual volume and uh, data services for virtual volume, they call virtual data, virtual data services or whatever, or virtual volumes. So uh, at the same time, I will appreciate uh, deep questions and I'll use whiteboard because this presentation, it's just a more Vivol, Vio, and our demo. And during the demo, I'll tell something, and, but definitely I'll use whiteboard. Any questions are very welcome. So it's uh, inevitable evil. <clears throat> so in this presentation, um, we talk about virtual volume uh, as a new uh, storage protocol uh, related to virtual world, and VIO as a data services that uh, VIO is enabled to be used for virtual volumes. So basically, for me, software-defined storage is a combination of, <clears throat> from VMware perspective, uh, is a combination of virtual volume, as, a, as I said, a storage protocol, and VIO, which is API for, for third party, and even their data services that we use for, from this so it, API. Is VIO limited to VVOLs? No, VVOL, you know, they treat VVOL much bigger. There is a VVOL storage, right. or virtual disk of virtual volume as a new protocol. For example, you may have SAN storage, VMFS, but from VMFS, uh, VMF VMFS exposes virtual disk. Right. Same about NFS. It is an NFS data store, but from... Okay, so they're just using confusing terminology. Yes. Vivol okay. is actually... I, I see where you are. <laughs> it's not, actually, it's not very good. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but they treat virtual volume virtual much... Virtual volume to mean two different things. Yes. They treat virtual volume <laughs> much broader than um, actually just a type of storage. <clears throat> so after that, I'll tell you about our architecture and <clears throat> uh, big demo, installation, configuration, everything. And finally, we'll talk about... Uh, uh, we'll talk about high availability and how we uh, develop this because we have write back caching and it's very important of course to have high availability. <clears throat> As I said, any questions? So first of all, what's the concept of virtual disk? As I mentioned, again, uh, I can just skip some, some slides if, if it is absolutely obvious for you or whatever. It's totally up to you. Please remotely control me. <laughs> So the idea is very simple. Decouple virtual disks from type of storage. And this is an idea from, uh, for virtual volume. And uh, they want to have for virtual, for virtual volume, this uh, protocol, uh, fine granularity. It's not a data store or granularity of control. It is not a uh, even VM, it is virtual disk. Unfortunately, it's not an extent, and with extent it will be probably even more interesting, for example, for snapshot support and so on, but this is a virtual disk. And <clears throat> they totally control operations, uh, the, the whole operations for the virtual disk, for virtual disk themselves, and for data services for these virtual disks. By the way, what's, what's mean data services for virtual disk? Data services means that uh, for virtual disk, what we can do, for example, replication, caching, encryption, this is a data services for virtual disk. That's why uh, VIO, it's a, as I said, it's enabled uh, data services for virtual disk. Again, speaking, thinking about virtual disk, broader than you mentioned. Uh, Rich, if you want to add something at any point, so please I think jump they're, in. I think they're, they're, okay, they're right <clears throat> okay <Go>. good. 
So basically there is a, again, in a virtual volume, uh, by the way, this is a VMware slides and I just use this, so. <laughs> it's easier that way. <laughs> <laughs> so actually it's from VASA, SPBM VASA, and uh, this is a control of management for this and data pass is directly here, having virtual disk exposed to vSphere. And as I said, it's NFS, iSCSI, fiber channel as a uh, media to deliver this. <clears throat> now speaking about VIO. First of all, it is very important. VIO is, allows data services, and let me talk about caching, allows our data service to be absolutely storage agnostic. For example, uh, for 5.5, uh, we have PSA filter level um, uh, implementation for our caching, but it works only for SAM. It doesn't work for NFS, it doesn't work for Vivo. Uh, is it the right level for uh, conversation? Is it, is it okay for you? Oh, it's yep. too, too clear. That's yeah, good. it's okay? Okay. It's too clear. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. It's too clear. Okay, <laughs> but I'm afraid to be boring. No, 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 no. no, no. You're not the boring most at all. I really afraid is to be boring. Ask <laughs> questions if you're not too clear. Sergey, yes. Richard's in charge of boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so here and back to your question. Actually, it's a Vivol. It is NFS storage. It is a Sun VMFS. Actually, it's also vSAN. We don't care if this is a virtual disk and everything underneath deliver virtual disk. So what they call virtual volume, it is a protocol. So please treat it as a protocol. Um, <clears throat> it is very important and you will see, uh, I think it's uh, some of our, I would say almost former competitor uh, told the entire world that to install their software, it's only 16 minutes. Uh, you will see that we beat them probably four times. Uh, it will be really minutes. You'll see the whole pretty much installation. And they really did a lot, Viag did a lot to automate installation, upgrade, and uh, version enforcement. For example, if it is a rolling update, uh, VM from the host that is running first version of software cannot go to the lower version, but vice versa, it can. So you can do actually uh, this uh, version enforcement for rolling updates. Um, obviously, we support all VMware solutions. Which is pretty impressive considering most VMware stuff comes out without that. I mean, the list of things you can't do with VBALs is long. That's right. So you see, actually, really, VIO, it's a very complicated product. So because, you know, they just took from the whole entire system, from the kernel and user mode, because it's a, from the user mode to the kernel, they do this and identify new ecosystem, API to their new ecosystem. And it will be only ecosystem for everything but storage pluggable uh, or for, from for, uh, attaching uh, storage. Rest for this API. So this is really important and I expect a lot of your questions about how this is done, including HA uh, in all, just for all cases in this case cases. <clears throat> All filters and our filter is integrated uh, with SPBM. SP SPBM. It's a storage policy based management. This is a view on the virtual disk from policy standpoint of view. For example, this and its policy. Where is a policy? Caching is a policy. And you can take policy, which is registered as a policy, you'll see it, and say, okay, for this virtual disk, I want to be this policy to be attached. And this really, say, attaching this policy. Uh, 
And I can layer multiple policies? Definitely, yes. Well, by the way, it was a presentation today together with EMC because EMC is replication. And they let them talk first. And I appreciate because I said that replication must be above caching. <laughs> <Obviously>. <laughs> so uh, different filters has assigned altitude and if different filters, multiple filters exist, there is an altitude for, for each of them. <clears throat> um, definitely we have VM and virtual disk cycle management notifications. Everything above, about virtual disk. Vmotion, snapshot, snapshot revert, full clone, storage vmotion. We know about everything. And this is very important because we have notification from VIA about all events and we'll go through the list of these events. You will see that uh, VIA is not a trivial product at all. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> all filters, and this is very important, I'll mention this, you will see it, uh, how it works later, are user mode. We have zero presence in the kernel. And uh, looks like, except of PSA again, uh, level, which is related to pluggable storage, everything will be in a user mode. And when, almost two years ago, they told us first time, actually they picked us as a partner uh, because we told them about our idea how write-back caching can be implemented on PSA level, Plus, we have write-back caching for bare metal system. They picked us. And when first time they told us that they will, they will move everybody out of kernel in a user mode, we were just shocked. We say, what about performance? And they say, wait, 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 wait. And I can tell you that switching between uh, kernel to user mode is about three microseconds for them. And that's good enough in this moment. After that, we'll see that why it's really good enough, looking at the diagram. And <clears throat> this one, uh, so, um, it is a lot of problems that we had in the past. When we want to uh, create our own persistent metadata per virtual disk, where to keep it? Well, next to for descriptor file. What to do with storage of emotion? Because storage of emotion, it will not copy this somewhere else. Plus, we always have the problem if we, we cannot share file descriptor because it could be asynchronously over, overwritten. So it was always. Is it the right level of discussion? Works too much details? You can't get too much details with this group. Good. Go deep. Okay, good yeah. enough? Yeah. Okay, good. Yep. So what they, what they gave for us, they gave us what they call sidecar. <laughs> sidecar. So each virtual disk has a special whatever that they call sidecar. When I say whatever, I ask them, what's your sidecar implementation? They told me, even though we are almost friends, I would say. <laughs> We're partners, but almost friends. They said, no, we cannot tell you. Because that, that's, I do not know how they implement it. Probably it's a portion of the same. Well, you might not be able to do some reverse engineering. But <laughs> I, have, I have so many other problems. That... <laughs> okay, so this is very important. What we keep in this <clears throat> sidecar, uh, accelerated or not accelerated? Right back or right through? Or right through. Uh, who owns this data? We have a concept of uh, owner of virtual disk. Uh, the owner of virtual disk is a host that actually is responsible for flushing data. I'm talking about write back caching. For flushing data for uh, this uh, virtual disk. For write through cache, uh, for write through caching because we support write back and write through. It is also important uh, because we must know when we must purge cache. If I have multiple servers, yes, machine running here, vMotion here, uh, and I, actually I do not know why virtual disk is closed because of vMotion or not. Actually, I, I know about this because of pre-vMotion pre notification, but uh, 
anyway, if something happened, for example, uh, I have machine is running here. Okay, let me ask you the question. Let's say I have preview motion notification. Is it enough for me to, to have, is it enough information to handle uh, purge cache in case of vMotion and return back? Looks like it's enough. It's preview motion. I just kill the whole cache and after that what? It's everything is okay, right? Purge cache, it goes there, return back, cache is, is empty. Mm -hmm. No, because machine may crash. Mm. It may crash somewhere in the middle of the motion, mm -hmm. at any moment. Mm -hmm. So if yeah, host need, is down, you need post host is back. Motion. Yeah, I have, I have to understand w what's going on. The host cluster must be, must be down. I must know when I have to, to do this. So that's more details around this. Uh, even for write through cache, we need this persistent metadata for, uh, let's say, data consistency. Now we know w what's going on. <clears throat> for example, in a, uh, our previous product, we had a close timestamp, but this is much simpler because we have this persistent metadata that we can use. So that's basically what about VIO and uh, you will see that uh, the events that we actually we have. <clears throat> Install from VIP cluster wide and you will see the demo. I don't want to st stay on this slide for a while but um, filter is configured for all virtual disk that defined filter for SPBM. So everything from the VIP we install and we know who is, uh, and we have uh, all information who, what virtual disk has to be uh, accelerated through SPBM to our persistent metadata. Um, that's exactly what uh, you asked me about. It's multiple filters here and this is internal diagram for this. Sim <clears throat> um, provider, obviously. <clears throat> it's our daemon. We'll talk a lot about our daemon. Uh, for example, we have very different architecture than uh, recovery point from EMC. Uh, daemon is for low latency uh, data access on a cache. We have our extension on a VC. Sim provider, our daemon. Uh, virtual machine and uh, inside virtual machine we have um, multiple you may have as a customer multiple filters um, everything is running in a user mode and in a kernel they call VIO framework um, because basically what's going on you'll see it in the next slide probably it will be better to see in the next slide um, no actually slide after that um, so basically that's what happened from virtual machine first request goes to VIO framework and after it bounce back to the filter. So this important part in the kernel. Um, this is an incomplete list of events that VIO sent to us. Disk attach our policy is attached to virtual disk. Um, virtual machine that owns this virtual disk may run or not run. If it doesn't run, uh, it's a host D and from host D uh, will handle attach. So by the way, our filter actually running inside each VM, inside host D, and even inside our daemon, it is exactly the same filter running inside all of, inside all these uh, components of um, ESX. So attach detach, attach our <coughs> policy, detach our policy, and we treat it as a start and stop acceleration. Disk open, disk close. <coughs> this is a set of uh, uh, calls that they provide for for us. Uh, to using uh, to, to get and write update our uh, persistent attribute side cards. Clone, disk snapshot, disk collapse, all these notifications they give us, uh, for example, disk snapshot. 
they tell us when they are going to start snapshot and give us the time, for example, to flush our cache. Why we have to flush our cache? If, and actually we talk about this when we met, if it is, ex let's say, uh, off-host snapshots, storage with off-host snapshots, data there must be consistent when external storage creates snapshot. It means that we have to flush all the data. It means that we have to be notified about this. But it takes time. Because it takes time, this operation is not a part of snapshot itself. So we, we will not time out flash so, uh, snapshot create, creation. So <clears throat> uh, that's why all this notification is very important. This grow, obviously, we need it for, for our cache. Uh, this is very important. Um, very important notifications. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, <clears throat> uh, we have pre-snapshot notification and post-snapshot notification. So pre-snapshot, we flush everything, and we are uh, we know actually snapshot is done, and because of if snapshot uh, has a problem, so actually we revert on our side, we revert all, all what we, what we did. So so you get the pre-snapshot notification and post-snapshot notification, and then you flush. We flush. And then we let you, them know. We let you, them know. Then you tell them you're done flushing. I'm done. It's actually progress. And then it takes. Okay. So and after that, they start snapshot. We don't <coughs> know when when they start snapshot really. But when they're done with snapshot, they let us know, and they tell us and, it's a successful or not. And while the, while they're in the middle of the snapshot, you're in write through mode. In the middle of snapshot, we are in write through mode. Okay, that's correct. And do you know if the um, VSS provider in VMware Tools works, coordinates through all of that? Uh, this is uh, VSS Pro, okay, VSS is above us and it's up right. to them how to manage this because it's uh, their, their snapshot, it's, uh, sorry, it's, you're talking about VSS provider, it's inside Windows VM, right? Right. You're, you're talking about Windows VM, but this is, uh, if it is coordinated, it is coordinated. But if we create snapshot, if, if Windows machine creates snapshot, for us it's kind of uh, uh, it, uh, irrelevant. So if, if yeah, it no, but, to but the vSphere side of things, to, to do a vSphere type snapshot, if the VSS provider, you're talking about the VSS within Windows? It's so well, I'm talking about the, the, not, not the VSS provider, yeah. which, which is the actual snapshot mechanism, but yeah. the VSS agent. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, if, if I've got the story, if I've got the policy engine saying, make me an hourly snapshot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then that, hour, that request is going to come in. The, the way I see it, the, the progress should be send Sergey his pre-snapshot notification. Wait for him to finish fluff flushing. Uh -huh. Then tell the application to quiesce while he's in write through mode. Then when VSS responds that the application is quiesced, and therefore the data on the disk is consistent, send the message to the array to take the snapshot. Then send the no, post. Uh, that, uh, that'll uh, be too early. It's a different, different layers, different completely layer. different yeah. layers. But you need to coordinate between them. It's all, it's, this is their problem. We can see it <laughs> only. No, 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 no. This, Sarah, is Sarah, Sarah, this is your problem that they tell you they've solved? <laughs> or this is just their problem? <sighs> it's not our problem. I and, okay, <laughs> number one. Number two, number two. Uh, because you know uh, this interesting conversation. Let, let's let's continue this uh, <laughs> this conversation. Uh, so, uh, Howard, if we're talking about virtual machine, right? VSS is running there, right? Right. And VSS, it is a snapshot provider. Probably it is a snapshot coordinator. Snapshot. I, I'm talking using VSS terminology. Okay. Uh, initiator, writer, and right. uh, provider. Right. Right. So we have. Provider, and this is a virtual disk level. Right. If they want to create snapshot, let them create snapshot. We can see only ESX level of snapshots. We cannot, if they integrate it, great. If not, actually, I don't care. If you run backup inside guest machine, mm -hmm. you don't care about snapshot in a host no. level, right? If you do care about this, coordinate it with. ESX snapshots, yeah. and in case of ESX snapshot that we can see, we'll do it. So again, we are virtual disk level. VSS for us 
is invisible. If they want to coordinate it, as you said, right. actually, yeah, if they want to coordinate it with ESX snapshot, fine, coordinate it, but it's not my, our problem at all. See, it's invisible. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely, absolutely right. right, it should be done like you said, but it's invisible for us. Yeah. Right. It yeah. must be invisible. Right, right. And it'd be like every storage vendor having to create VSS capabilities into other things instead of supporting something like VAI. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, this is something that, oh, this is, uh, you know, unlikely to Windows and Linux that can shrink and grow the file, they can actually make a hole inside uh, virtual disk. And this is for us notification, especially in write back caching mode, we must have it. And if we have this notification, we actually invalidate part of the cache that basically, uh, uh, basically that's covered this, this hole. Uh, uh, extend get pre and extend get post. Uh, this is notification for us about extent map and it's also important for us if we want to support VDI and we want to support VDI. Because you see if it is a snapshot and after that link clone you have to know when extent is created or overall. It's, a, it's, it's really important information for us. Uh, VM migration, it's a, about uh, Vmotion, and this is definitely some uh, bus reset, uh, command abort. Uh, finally, that's one. Actually, all reads and writes are here. <laughs> <It's only> one. <laughs> one request here. It's a, basically it's a disk IO. <clears throat> and disk stun and stun. Uh, Sometimes we, we, they ask us, do not, for some reasons internally for VMware, they ask us not to send any any I.O. to the virtual disk and sometime we start this I.O.s, we, we, we have to start this I.O. mostly because of flushing. So, uh, I think you understand how complicated is the I.O. and uh, I can tell you that it is easier to develop for uh, VIO than for Windows kernel, but it takes time to understand how to do it. So fortunately, we start design together with VMware, and we had one and a half year to develop this. Uh, this is a diagram how it works. So <clears throat> when VM starts I.O., it goes to VIO framework, uh, which is in a kernel, and from here, bounce back to our I.O. filter. Now I.O. filter can uh, start uh, regular I.O., it calls the I.O. framework, say, okay, start uh, regular I.O. Uh, why we need it? For example, it's a read cache miss, right? If it's a read cache miss, um, <coughs> just, we see it in, a, in our caching software, we see it read cache miss, and after that we send it to the disk. So filter can start I.O., regular I.O. Uh, actually, uh, remember, it was interrupted, yes? Uh, Virtual machine start I.O., it goes to this framework, bounce to I.O. filter, and this is, I'd like to continue, continue this. But also, uh, I.O. filter has direct access to acceleration hardware, and this is very important. Because you see, let's see what's going on. This is a filter, and virtual machine running here. So, by the way, I probably didn't tell you, uh, our software works as a library of, uh, for in VMX. You know what this means, VMX, no? Each uh, virtual machine is a process, user mode process from ESX standpoint of view. And there is a part of ESX that's running in a user mode inside virtual machine that called VMX. So we are part of VMX. Our filter is inside virtual machine, but outside of guest. It's not an agent inside guest machine. It is part of VMX. So we can run directly I.O. to acceleration uh, hardware. So it's a delay is very little. Uh, latency is very small. From virtual machine to framework, bounce to I.O. filter, and directly 
to the to the to, to SSD. So you see that's very important because we skip lots of layers. We'll talk about performance a little bit more. And that has to be a dedicated SSD, right? Yes. Oh no, no. We can use partition. It's it's up to customer. We do not dictate it.